submitted for your approval. A butane with a leaving group substituent as the number two carbon. Suppose also that this particular two substituted butane undergoes an E2 elimination reaction. Since the number two carbon holds the leaving group, it is our alpha carbon. Notice that next to it, the number one and number three carbons are the beta carbons, and the number four carbon, two carbons distant from the alpha, is the gamma carbon. We have circled in purple one possible beta hydrogen that could be abstracted by base during an E2 reaction. Here is another possible beta hydrogen, but now attached to a different carbon, the number three carbon. If the beta hydrogen from carbon number one is abstracted, we obtain this elimination product, 1-butene. Suppose, on the other hand, that the base abstracts a hydrogen attached to carbon number three. What would our product then be? In that case, we obtain the compound 2-butene. We notice that the carbon-carbon double bond, rather than being between carbons 1 and 2, is between carbons 2 and 3, and that 1-butene and 2-butene are clearly distinct compounds with different chemical properties. Here is the computed transition state for the abstraction of a beta hydrogen from carbon number one by hydroxide. Here is the same transition state, but now with labels on the appropriate carbon atoms, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and labeling the leaving group. This also clearly shows that the abstracted beta hydrogen and the leaving group are anti-periplanar, as required by the mechanism of the E2 reaction.
we have added black dots to represent the Lewis dot electron pairs that are crucial in the E2 elimination reaction, particularly the lone pair on the base that abstracts the beta hydrogen, the bonding pair between carbon and the beta hydrogen, between carbon and the leaving group, and between two adjacent carbon atoms. Here, arrows show the flow of electrons in the three simultaneous steps that occur in the concerted E2 reaction. This is the optimized structure of the product, 1-butene, and we clearly see the carbon-carbon double bond has the short 1.332 angstrom length, whereas the single bonds have lengths on the order of 1.5 angstrom. Next, we have the computed transition state if the base abstracts the beta hydrogen attached now to the third carbon as opposed to the first carbon. Again, we have shown the important electron pairs involved in the reaction. The flow of electrons shows the bond forming between the base and the beta hydrogen, the movement of the bonding pair between carbon and hydrogen to increase the carbon-carbon single bond to a carbon-carbon double bond, and we see the lone pair leaving with the leaving group of chloride in this particular case. The resulting product is now 2-butene, and we see between the second and third carbons the short 1.33 angstrom length indicative of a carbon-carbon double bond, whereas the two flanking carbon-carbon bonds are clearly single bonds because they have lengths on the order of 1.50 angstroms. Zaitsev's rule tells us that when there is a choice of possible products for an E2 elimination reaction, the most likely product is the most stable alkene, the one that is most branched. Here we can see that this is true quantitatively. The resulting product from abstraction at the first carbon gives us one butene with a enthalpy of reaction of minus 20 kcals per mole, whereas if we abstract at the third carbon, we get the product 2-butene, which has an enthalpy of minus 42 kcals per mole. We expect, and is confirmed by Zaitsev's rule, that the product will be 2-butene. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.